Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're looking at a pen. It is the Gamma Forever. Now this is a handmade Indian pen sold through uh, Fountain Pen Revolution in the United States made by the brand Gamma uh, in Chennai, India and as I said, beautiful sort of ebonite pen. This is the brown model with the black swirl. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a quick look at the pen, have a look at the parts, um, I'll give you some specs and then uh, sort of say things that I particularly like and a few things that I don't particularly like and then I'll uh, show you how the pen actually writes. So, as you can see, this is not a small pen. This is a good size uh, pen. The basic specs are uh, capped, it's 14.5 centimeters. Uncapped, it's 13.1, which is more than big enough to use sort of uncapped. In fact, it's a very comfortable pen in the hand. Uh, and posted, it becomes quite a large 17.5 centimeters, which is okay because the balance is pretty good. Um, a lot of the weight sort of sits towards the middle of the pen, but um, it is quite long. The diameter of the section is 1.15 centimeters, so it's a nice size, and it tapers slightly towards a little lip there, just um, on the end, just to sort of to really sort of let you know where to place your fingers. It screws to cap um, and takes many screws to really get that in, um, it, which you know makes it very secure, but also it's a little bit of a hassle at times. The threads there on the top of the section are smooth, they don't get in the way at all. Um, I tend to hold my pen, hold it over um, the threads and it's really no problem whatsoever. The clip is, I think, just ever so slightly too small for the pen, but it's you know quite secure and has a nice sort of ball on the end which allows you to uh, pocket the pen quite easily. The top of the cap is flat and unadorned, as is the end of the pen, uh, and the only branding is a slight engraving there that says Gamma on the barrel. Um, whether that needs to be there, I'm not sure. I suppose I need the branding on the pen somewhere. There's these two uh, gold coloured to match with the clip, uh, sort of centre bands on the, on the cap, uh, and I think it makes for a really nice looking pen. I got this with the one millimeter stub nib, it's a two-tone steel nib, um, and it writes reasonably well. Uh, occasional hard starts, uh, occasional flow issues, but really nothing that can't be sort of uh, fixed uh, without sort of too much effort. This is an eyedropper pen, I won't open it now because it is filled with ink, uh, but it's got a, a massive ink capacity of about four millilitres, and means you can write and write uh, for days and days. So the price point for this pen is one of the things that makes it really interesting. If you know about the um, Fountain Pen Revolution model, you know that, they that the company was started to provide uh, affordable fountain pens uh, and well-made fountain pens. Um, and this is both well-made and affordable. This pen costs $35 American. Uh, plus you know, obviously postage and things like that and uh, comes with a, a basic range of nibs and for nine dollars I got uh, the stub nib put on this pen. So what do I like and what do I sort of not like so much? Well I'll start with what I don't like because that's the short list. There are two things uh, that sort of jump out. Firstly the clip, the, the cap, a couple of things with the cap are um, the as I said, I think the clip is probably just a little bit too short uh, for the pen, uh, aesthetically. I think it could be maybe half a centimetre longer. And also these cap bands are just, they're just slightly raised. Um, and while that may not be an issue, um, and they're sort of loose on the, on the cap, um, while that's not really an issue, it's tolerances like that that I think you know, make this pen in a way affordable. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of uh, is the nib itself. Um, yes, it writes and it writes wet and it's quite smooth, but there are some hard starts and 
the st the way the nib is ground, it's still quite um, a round nib. So the stub nature of it is not uh, overly um, present, as you'll see in the writing sample. The difference between the cross strokes and the up and down strokes are quite minimal. I have this pen at the moment inked with Diamine Terracotta, one of my favourite uh, inks. It's a really lovely earthy brown with some nice reds and it shades just beautifully uh, and in a wet pen like this the shading is really noticeable. As I said, the ink is stunning. Terracotta. So you can see the pen writes nice and wet. It puts down a nice amount of ink uh, and lays down a nice broad line. But as I said, this was, I ordered this thinking, you know, that the stub would be a, a stub and while there is a fair variation in the line uh, in sort of direct up and down versus cross strokes. In sort of writing, the variation is much less pronounced, and I would personally prefer it to be slightly more pronounced. Just do a quick, uh, the quick sentence. One of the famous lines from John Macefield's poem, Sea Fever. Look, it's a really lovely pen to write with. As you can see, I'm writing with it unposted. It's a good size. It's nice and wet. Um, and this is an ink that really does, as I said, uh, come across well in a pen that writes nice and wet. And I think the colours sort of match up quite uh, nicely uh, as well. Sort of that brown with the sort of the brownie red of the, of the ink. So to summarise, this is a really interesting pen and a really good pen at this price point. In comparison to other pens, if we look at it sort of in terms of against a Lamy All-Star or a Pilot Metropolitan, firstly that gives you a, a sense of the size of the pen, but also this pen is sort of priced roughly in the middle of these. You can get a Pilot Metropolitan in the US for about $15 or in Australia for around the $35 mark and an All-Star in the US um, is about uh, th I think around the $50 mark uh, and in Australia a little bit more um, so it places itself nicely in the middle price wise how does it compare in terms of writing well it's a wetter writer uh, it's not as well made it's not as, perhaps as sturdy as a couple of these other pens also put into that category that um, the Tuesby Eco of course and even at the higher end the Faber-Castell Loom so that was the Gamma Forever a really interesting fountain pen and one worth investigating if you particularly if you like handmade ebonite pens uh, this is mass produced handmade of course not custom handmade but still it's got that nice sort of feeling of being a sort of a a not uh sort of commercial mass mass produced pen i hope you found this video useful if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that i produce and please feel free to drop me a message. You can either do that here uh, at, on YouTube or at my blog on Instagram or Twitter, which are all linked down below. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.